Hey everyone, Mike here. Um, <clears throat> I was waiting on my uh, furnace to turn off up here in my office uh, so I don't have so much background noise. Uh, today, this video uh, is about making um, plugs for poppers and the, uh, the materials and tools that I use to make them. Uh, they're pretty easy to make and I um, I make them from these 10 millimeter foam pads and laminate them together. And the way you laminate is um, <clears throat> I use a regular contact cement and I will coat the, uh, you know, one side of the ends and then I'll coat the, uh, on the center one there, I'll coat both sides. You got to let, if, when you're using contact cement, you, you, you must let it dry completely. Don't, don't let it set beyond it getting dry um, but if you if you apply it wet then it, it's it's not going to uh, work as well um, when it's a, when you put the pieces together dry and then when, <clears throat> what I do to make sure to, that they're really sealed together is I have these blocks that I made and when I first put them when I first put the foam together I'll encapsulate the the um, the uh, foam inside those blocks and then I'll use a uh, actually I use four of them I'll use these uh, clamps these quick 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 grip clamps uh, to hold the material down onto the glue so it can set real well and then what I'll do is I'll hit a, I'll hit um, a clamp on each corner and press it down until it's really compressed so that all the glue, all the dry glue, is absolutely in touch with, with one another. And in that way, um, you have a really good um, bond on the, um, on, on, the, uh, on the foam. And that's when you can make nice, nice poppers like that right there. Um, this, this popper will not come apart. I mean, these things are... They are sealed. It might as well be just one solid piece of foam. And then by the time you end up painting um, the foam to whatever color you like, uh, it'll pretty much hide those uh, those seams that you see right there. So that's uh, that's why I'm doing this to make these things here, so that I can make these things here. Um, this is an articulated popper and it's got a streamer piece on the back which is essentially just a woolly bugger um, with some uh, silicone legs that come off the back. I have not painted or finished this one yet put, to put eyes on it. Here's one that is made from, um, this one is made from flip-flops and uh, you do this, the flip-flops the same way. I don't have any at my desk here, but you might, uh, on the flip-flops, cut out square pieces or even take the flip-flop and just get a couple of them and, and uh, uh, use your uh, contact cement on one side of a flip. you got to make sure that they're in uh, uniform, uh, all pointing in the same direction. You coat one side on the ends, and then the center one, you can coat both sides. And then when it dries, you put them together. And then you got yourself a solid piece of, uh, of foam in virtually any color that you can find on the Walmart shelves in, uh, uh, for the, for the flip-flops. So anyway, let's get to what it is that I'm talking about or what this video is supposed to be about. And that's making um, these things right here. This one here cuts a, uh, let's see, this one here cuts a, a um, well, let me look, measure them. I think this one's a 3 8 What do I do with my, here it is. Okay, so this, the smaller one, <clears throat> excuse me, the sm yeah, the smaller one is 3 8 of an inch, cuts a 3 8 inch uh, piece of foam. And here's the, here's the size differences right here. Um, this is three eighths. This is half inch, and then I've got another uh, one. This is this is uh, this is the steel insert that goes inside these uh, brass tubes, and this is a half inch uh, that would would make a half inch uh, 
uh, plug. So the, all, all you need to do to make these, and this is going to be a short video, um, all you need to do to make these <clears throat> is you, you need, <clears throat> uh, let me see, okay, here we go. And that's in there pretty tight already, and I haven't even sealed it yet. Well, for Pete's sakes, that's a good thing, though. Anyway, the way you make them is here's one of the steel inserts, and all it is is uh, a, um, a uh, piece of, of uh, steel stock that has grooves cut out in it right here. And what happens is, let me grab this one here. What happens is these, these grooves um, will spread out when this little um, piece is put down. It's actually, they're already, a, they're already in, in there. Uh, if you look inside this one, it's got a little blue piece of plastic that keeps this piece inside and it doesn't get lost. So. I've already, um, and, then, and then actually what you do, because if you look at this right here, that, that is loose. That, that is a very, very lo loose piece. And the way you tighten it up is you take a piece of, of shrink tubing that's just oversized from the um, steel insert that you're going to be applying to your tube, and you heat shrink this tubing or the yeah the shrink tubing down onto the drop insert and I really wish I could get there we go that's 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 why I like um, because it's going to be real hard on these steel inserts to find an exact diameter that's going to fit these things in a press fit so that uh, so that it stays symmetrical all the way around when you're using your drill to sharpen or cut out um, the plugs. So with the um, with with the drop-in anchors that have the the um, the shrink tubing on them, when you apply it to the the uh, tubing itself, just like that. Now it's now it's down in there. So now what you're going to want to do, and I'm not I'm not going to do it here on on my uh, on my tying desk, but I'll show you what you do to set the anchor uh, inside this tubing, so that when you when it gets pressed in, I, I think you should be able to see it, maybe if I get the lighting right here. Uh, right there, I think you can see you can see a little bit of a, a ridge in, around there. So what the, what that ridge is is when this is inside and you knock that plug further into the anchor, it spreads these pieces out right here. It's it spreads it spreads these apart and it expands evenly all the way around the tube and it makes a really uh, perfectly aligned uh, plug cutter. And the way I do that, or the way I set it, is I have one of these things here. It's called a, um, a, a leveler, a, uh, an appliance leveler, a machine leveler. It's a leveler bolt is what it's actually called, but that's what it's for. It's to level furniture and machinery and whatever. So. What, what I will do is, and I'm, again, I'm not going to do it here on my desk, on my tying desk, because I don't want to break it. Um, it is a solid desk, but I'm not going to take any chances. Is you take this leveler, now, now this is a 3 8 inch leveler, and I, I don't know that you would want to go any smaller than a 3 8 if you do, you know, it, you're, you might be a little hard pressed to find um, these drop in anchors smaller than these quarter 20s. Uh, which takes a 3 8 inch drill bit to, uh, to to insert them, and most most of these things are used for concrete applications. So 
you'll take the uh, piece that you, you put the insert in, this is the insert, and then to spread it out, I'll put it on top of this um, leveler, uh, uh, leveling bolt, and then I will take um, this right here, it's just a, uh, a, a punch, and I need to have it smaller than a quarter 20, and what it does is it'll go down inside and push against this piece right here down into the pieces that are cut, spread it out, and then I then I end up with um, I end up with this right here. So just to uh, give a quick demonstration on how good these things do. Well, actually, let me let me let me do let me talk about one other thing, and that's sharpening. Uh, the ends of these. Now you can use a lot of different uh, things. You can use, uh, you know, shells, uh, bullet shells, um, you know, a lot of different things, but you won't, you're going to be hard pressed to uh, do it with any other material other than, uh, you know, a standard tubing that has a very thin wall to it. The thin wall is very important because the thinner the wall, the easier it is to keep these things sharp to be able to plunge through your foam to make your plugs. Um, so, what you, the the reason why I, I have this this way, the way, reason why I use these things is they go right inside my drill bit with the with the um, bolt that I have that I cut off. I didn't bring a bolt up here. I don't think. Darn it. Oh yeah, I did. Right here. Okay. All all I did <clears throat> was I took a standard, you know, bolt. Uh, this is a three uh, 16, and it's probably about two and a half inches long. And I cut off enough right here to where it won't bottom out inside, because I actually want this taper on the end to bottom out inside that drop-in anchor, because it will center. It will it will force it to center perfectly. Okay, and when you have it centered perfectly, there you go. And so to sharpen it, because you're going to have, what's going to happen is, you've got the end here that's just got the, the uh, wall of the, uh, of the tube. You're not going to be, you, you might be able to, but I, I like to put a little bit of an, a knife edge on these so that when I go to use them to make my plugs, it, it, pl it goes down a lot smoother, like this right here, and uh, it doesn't deform it when, if you try to press them through, because I've, I've done that. I've, I've tried to uh, just press them, press them through, and what it does is it, it squeezes the foam small and then when you get the plug out of one that you've pressed you'll find that each end is a little bit has a little bit more of a diameter to it than the center part so they kind of go into an hourglass shape um, that might be desirable for some people I'd rather just have a, uh, a straight plug to, t to tie from so that I can make what I call my streepers and that's these right here and believe me these things are these things are dynamite on smallmouth bass <clears throat> but um, let's go ahead and take a piece of foam that I used uh, or that I've already glued up and I told you how to do that and all we need to do is take this uh, drill you'll, you'll need a, a drill if you're going to go to this size tube here let's see where'd it go actually I don't have um, I don't have a half inch tube here to make to make um, you know, a, a five eighths inch or a half inch uh, plug. Um, I do have these. That'll make a three quarter inch uh, plug. And I'm pretty sure they do have these anchor pieces that do, uh, that I can put in there to make, uh, to make a three quarter inch. So that means I can go, you know, three eighths, half inch, five eighths, and three quarter. Um, which will give you a complete range of uh, the, the uh, plugs that you, I would think you would ever need, if, unless you want to go to doing something with, um, you know, for, for bluegill, 
and then you'll just use one sheet of this and then you can go down to smaller pieces but then you don't really need to get into doing all of this you, you can use just about any kind of plug cutter to, to do that um, but here we go I'm gonna go ahead and make one, make one of these plugs now I'm feeling back here to see about where this thing's gonna come out at I don't want to have it come out on my finger but you'll be able to tell as you get to the end there you'll be able to see that right there uh, starting to protrude out you move your fingers and then just move it around and it just cuts it right out just like that and then you'll use a bodkin to, to reach in and grab it and and there you go you got yourself a plug you can make them, like I said, three-eighths, half-inch, five-eighths, and three-quarter um, once I get all the parts put together. Uh, I'll, I'll try to have, this will be on, uh, on my website, thefrugalflyrotter.com, um, and I'll have links there where you can find all this stuff. And I might even put a package together where I'll have pieces in the package where you can just... Uh, assemble these things yourself and and that that will include everything from you know the uh, anchors the tubing the shrink tube to be able to put it in and I'll even cut um, cut these uh, these pieces of uh, bolts so that you can use them inside your your drill and they'll be perfectly perfectly centered Oh, one of the things I didn't do on this is I showed you how to use it. To sharpen these things is pretty simple uh, to put the edge on it. And I, I'm kind of jumped on you there. I do that a lot. Uh, I'm OCD or whatever. It doesn't matter, right? Kind of jump around. You, if you're, you know, if you're able to, you should be able to keep up with me. Anyway, the the way um, the way I sharpen it is I have a, a very small file. Now that you want a fine tooth file, uh, you don't want anything uh, too, you, in fact, the finer the better, because that's where you can take your, you, you, you'll want to, um, you want to have this cutting in the direction of the cut of the file. If you, if you have it, um, you, you can always reverse the, um, the drill. But the problem with reversing the drill to catch the file on this side is it could come loose on the, um, you know, on the thing, and then it's going to wobble on you, and you don't want that. So to keep it tight, you want it to always go against the uh, the thread so that it's constantly tightening up as you're as you're sharpening. So flip it over, and then all I need to do is just hit it right here like this. And you can see that little bit of um, those little brass flakes right in there. That's what uh, that's what I use to. Uh, that's the way I sh that's the way I sharpen these things. And you can see by the way I um, put the uh, you know the, the the plug cutter through this foam here. You can see how nice of a foam plug that it does make. And then you know from there you can you know apply them however however you want. I, I, I actually like, and I have one here that I've already done, is I have a um, I, I have this uh, square rule it belongs to a square and I just double stick tape it down and I take a bodkin and I'll take my um, let's go let's go this direction so you can see it in the video here is I will heat this up with a torch just to give it a little bit I don't want to heat it so much that it's um, it, it turns super red I just want it to where there's a, a an orange flame coming and as soon as you see the orange flame you want to take it away because this will be hot enough to run through if you wait until you see an orange flame you're going to ruin the well it's, it's going to ruin a, you, you want to use a bodkin that you that you're ready to throw away anyway um, but you'll use the bodkin heat it up and then you'll be able to lay it down here. And what happens is, 
as you as you cut through the uh, bodkin follows this uh, groove in here that that's that goes inside the uh, square and it just just like this and you hit it hit it there and just run it straight through just like that that way when you do that it will put a hole real close to the bottom without cutting through the bottom and that I think gives a better bond to the hook um, and, and it gives a really nice size small hole so that when you use your um, when you use your uh, CA glue to bond it to the hook I, what happens is when you have the hole this low on the um, foam plug when when the fly hits the water because the hook is up on top the weight of the hook is going to cause this thing to spin right back down and to be right side up the way you want it. Um, you can even have the hook up if the hook is pointing up or actually it would be down this way but if you want the, the hook to be pointing up to maybe give you a, a little bit of weed protection to run across the top, top of weeds it'll, you, it'll spin around it'll spin around and the hook will be up on top and it'll just do it that, that way every time and if you look here I need to practice my positioning here so I can get it get it right every time but you'll, you'll see that I've got it right here and then as I spin it over it comes out in the exact same spot right there right there right there it, it puts a perfect alignment of the um, of the plug. This is Mike. Until the next video, we'll catch you later. And thanks for watching.